Yo, what's up everybody? As you can see, different style, different, different format today. You usually used to us talking a lot about Bitcoin and a lot about the charts. And we decided to bring the real side. We decided to actually sit and have a conversation and actually give you a true view of what we're building here, what Rand's building with banter and what the actual future goal is um, and what actually gets us up every day. So I think it's a new style, get used to it. I think it's gonna be fantastic. Before we start off, brother, I wanna do a massive cheers for everything that we have been through, I see those things behind my arm, yeah? Um, for everything that we've um, achieved in the last year, bro. Like, I think it's been an absolute journey. I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for, for giving me the shots. Like, bro, I never thought I'd be doing this stuff. I never thought I'd be able to ever achieve these things. Uh, and you just gave me somewhere where I had a voice and I could actually speak. And not only from me, from the community, from every single person here, like, Thank you, bro. It's a pleasure. Um, it's what we do, we change lives. What you're building here is phenomenal, bro. I don't even think you like. I don't even think you even see the full picture. So I'm very excited for the journey. Um, so guys, I'm Sean the Sniper. This is Rand the Man, um, and I think let's start it off, brother. Let's start it off with crypto banter. What is it? What is the purpose behind it? And how did it even happen? So it's an interesting story. I think first of all, you kept saying what I'm building here. It's not what I'm building here. It's maybe what what I ignited, but we're all here together and, mm. and it's a machine and i think let's take a little bit of a, a look at to what this machine this, this this monster that we created was so rewind a couple of years um i had a very big marketing business uh, it was the biggest marketing business in africa i started the business from zero and i built it 2015 it was the biggest marketing business in africa and at some point i realized that i couldn't live in a linear world anymore i lived in a world where if i wanted to make money the more money that I, that I wanted to make, the more offices that I needed to have, mm. the more people mm. I needed to hire, the more clients I needed to get. And what I felt was, it felt like I was, I was on a treadmill, but someone else was holding the remote control. And <laughs> I felt that I had to run faster and faster and faster to keep up with the pace of the business. As the business grew, I had to run faster and faster and faster. Mm. Only thing was, I was getting older and older and older. And so I had less and less and less time and energy, I had my family and kids. So I felt that I needed to step change. And I saw businesses like Uber and Facebook and, and, and Amazon and all these businesses that they built billion dollar businesses and $10 billion businesses in the same amount of time in much less time than I built a $150 million business. It took me 15 years to build a $150 million business. And it took these guys two, three years to build unicorns. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I realized that what I was doing wrong was I wasn't thinking exponentially. So what do you do when you realize that something's wrong with you? You try and fix it. So I went and I tried to train my brain to think exponentially. Now, that's not easy because if you've been thinking linearly, and that's how humans think. Humans think linearly. One plus one equals two. You want to get from point A to point B. It's 10 steps. People, humans can't really think exponentially. Hmm. But if you can change your mind to think exponentially, then you have an unfair advantage on other people because mm -hmm. you, you can mm -hmm. think exponential and they can't for you i, I think half the plan is still thinking old school exactly mm -hmm. so i went on a journey and you know me i'm obsessive so when i went <laughs> on the journey i was really obsessive i listened to podcasts I listened to youtube channels i went to singularity university i did their master's program i went to harvard and i did everything in harvard to do with exponential thinking and you name it i did it and coincidentally i also started to invest in crypto and coincidentally, also went to a crypto conference, and I think it was 2016. I may be wrong, but I think it was 2016. And everything just came together, and I realized that crypto is the most exponential opportunity of our lives. It's mm. you know, crypto is all about network effects. Network effects are the most powerful force in business, and crypto is the ultimate example of network effects 2.0. And when that when that happened, it was almost like a switch went off in my brain, and it's like, I almost say like, it's like I went and learned another language, but while I learned the other language, I f the previous language that I knew didn't make any sense. So, oh, it's, wow. okay. so it's like, it's like, it's like if me and you speak English and then I go and learn how to speak Mandarin and then I come back and I don't remember how to speak English anymore, me and you can't speak anymore because we yeah. see the world differently. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what happened. I came back to my circle of friends, to my company and everyone was still thinking linearly. Mm. And I was thinking crypto and exponential and networks and digital money and like, Basically, like, no one could communicate with me anymore. And the problem that I had back in the day was that there was no information about crypto. There was zero information. 
So I wanted to know more about Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum and why these things were going up and down, but there was no info. Mm. I mean, today you got YouTube videos and you got coins. It's crazy now. It's crazy now. You got crypto banter. You got crypto banter. <laughs> but but it's back then it wasn't like that. Back then there was nothing, and so I thought the way to do this is to create content. But I never thought I'd have to create content. I thought I'd have to motivate others to create content. So I met a few friends. I met a friend of mine who's a director of CNBC. Long story short, I mean, I tried to pitch CNBC a few times to to start talking about Bitcoin and at the time Litecoin and a whole lot of others, and they weren't interested. To them, crypto was a Ponzi. It was all the bad things in the world. Mm, mm. And then one day I was sitting with a friend of mine from CNBC, and I said to him, "Look, I'm all in crypto," and he explained, "He said, ah, you won't believe it. I love crypto too." And we started talking, and he said. Why don't you go and talk to my production manager about having a show on CNBC around crypto? And I said, yeah, that's cool. And I went the next morning and I met the production manager and there was a whiteboard and I drew about Bitcoin on the whiteboard for her. And you know, like everybody has that penny drop of it, like moment where mm, the eyes light mm, up. Mm. And I could see that she, when I walked in, she thought Ponzi, tulip bubble. Yeah, and yeah. then immediately I just saw her eyes light up. Whoosh. And she said, we have to start covering this. We have to have a show about this. And I said, well, great, cool. Why don't you do two minutes on Power Lunch or Squawk Box or whatever it is? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, no, no, no. This needs to be a full show, 26 minutes or 40 minutes, whatever it was. And this needs to be weekly. And this needs to be live. I was like, cool, great. Let me know if you need anything. She goes, no, 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 no. You're going to do the show. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time and I've never done TV before. She says, well, don't worry about the time thing. And don't worry about TV because we have a production team and we'll teach you how to do TV. Okay, cool. Let's try. Never done TV before, but hey, how difficult can it be? And the first week I arrived back at CNBC and I realized that actually no one knows anything about crypto. It's like, shit, we can't do a show like this. So we canceled the first show. Second week, I found all my friends in crypto, Brock Pierce, Spencer Bogart, all the people that I'd met at the conferences. And I said, listen, I'm going to phone you on this day and on this time. And I'm going to speak to you about crypto and you're going to be live on CNBC. And on, in, in August 2017, I think it was like the 6th of August or I don't know the exact date, we launched the world's first televised crypto show on CNBC. Wow, bro. And that was the beginning of an era. Okay. And I ran that show pretty much up until lockdown. Um, I had the time of my life. I met the who's who. I interviewed but pretty much, I think I've interviewed everybody in the crypto space except Satoshi. Mm, mm. CZ, Binance. You, you even had to move to the US, right? I, I didn't have to. I wanted to. Wanted I wanted to. to. Okay. Um, and then something happened. What I realized was that people loved the fact that CNBC was covering crypto. It was, mm. it was a big feather in our cap. It was a big tick. Wow, CNBC is covering it. But people would never listen to what CNBC said mm, about crypto. Mm. <laughs> true, true. Would you ever true, listen true. to, would you ever take trading advice from CNBC? Never. 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 But why do you think though? Like it's just something they've, they've caused over the years. We'll talk about why media is broken, but, <laughs> yeah. but CNBC in my mind have got it all wrong. Mm. And I saw two opportunities. So the, the, what was wrong with CNBC was that people, crypto people respected what CNBC, um, uh, that, that CNBC was covering crypto, but they'd never follow it. That's number one. Number two, I've never heard the word or felt a sense of community around the word mm, CNBC. Mm, no true. one's ever part of the CNBC community. Why? Because they're an old type of media. It's cold. Mm. The journalists are trained to ask neutral questions and not to sway from one side to the other. The the way they position themselves is very much an us and them. Look at us. We're in, I'm in a homeless person sweater. You're in a, in a mm, Uniqlo mm, mm. and CNBC is in a suit and tie. We're chilling here, sitting in a coffee shop, drinking fake beers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and, and, and CNBC sit in a studio and sit like this. Very true. Mm. And that's pretty much cold. And mm. I, I felt like I had more to give. And so I decided that, to leave and to start my own channel and the channel was supposed to bring live credible 24 7 365 crypto content to the world that's how it started and 
the reason why we started was because in traditional markets, you can switch on Bloomberg, CNBC, CNN, any time of the day, and within half an hour, you know exactly what is, uh, what's going on in the market. But in crypto, you can't do that. So where do you, if I said to you, Sheldino, mm. right now, tell me what's going on in the market. Where do you go? Other than banter. Yeah, it's so tough. There's no way. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. to Twitter. Twitter is full of noise. It is, it is. You can go to Telegram. But if your Telegram looks yeah, anything like terrible. my Telegram, Telegram it's going to explode. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't yeah. open my Telegram for the fear that it will explode. Mm. You can go to YouTube. Problem with YouTube is YouTubers are paid. Mm. And so you never know if they're talking about a token because they really want to talk about it and because it's newsworthy or because it is or because they've been paid. And so there's no credibility. And so I decided that we need to start a business that is live, credible, 24-7 streaming crypto um, to the world. Initially, it was supposed to be radio. We couldn't find a platform to broadcast radio on, live radio, because Spotify and Apple don't allow you to broadcast live. And we thought one of our things is live, credible, 24-7, 365 streaming. And so it then evolved into, well, why not, when I realized that you can't actually do live radio, so what was the goal? Like people just phoned in and like... Well, at the time, it was call-in radio. We were going to talk, we talk about crypto 24-7, 365. Okay. That was the okay. idea. Didn't work because we couldn't find a radio streaming platform. And so we started a crypto streaming platform and we started on YouTube. And at the time, it was a call-in. Banter was a call-in station. Okay. And then we learned a couple of lessons. The first thing is people didn't want to call in. So I remember the first show I sat there, I was like, call in now and <laughs> talk crypto. And like, no one called in. No one, no one, one called <laughs> And then one day, then eventually I started to orchestrate people calling in. So I called my friends and I said, listen, tomorrow, just call in so we can have a crypto discussion. And then, and I had a team of producers and whatever else. And the one day, one of the callers didn't arrive. And so one of the callers didn't arrive. And so I had a gap between where I was and the next caller. And so I started talking about my experiences in crypto. And the views just went up and up and up and, and up, up and up. Just up. Took off. Oh, wow. And then my producer said, that was the best thing I've ever heard. Why don't you just do all the shows on your own? And then I started doing all the shows on my own and the, group, the, the view started to grow. And what I realized was that if I tell people what I've learned in crypto and then tell them what I'm doing about it, that's a much more powerful show than getting people mm, to call in. Mm. And so that was the beginning of what I believe was the revolution, which made Banter a crypto reality show. So what is a crypto reality show? It's not scripted. It's just run. It started off as just run, learning about crypto, and then teaching everybody else what as he's learning. learning just sharing the experience a lot and also sharing what he was doing about it mm, mm. and started to build an amazing community and i didn't even know what the word community meant i just there were just more and more subscribers on youtube more and more subscribers on twitter and it was amazing and then um we were growing and growing and growing and i started to get the vibes again of cnbc and the fame and whatever else and then one day w we used to host the friday banters like we do today it's been since the beginning and one day we decided to have a live viewing of the Friday mm. banters. So we invited people to our office and we did the Friday banter live in the office. And that was a, like the beginning of a meetup. And then in that Friday meetup, this young kid walked in. <laughs> he was 24 at the time. He was very quiet. He was shy. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was almost weird. He was almost weird because he was so quiet. He was like, one of these um, highly gifted but semi-autistic <laughs> as borderline Asperger's people who didn't say much. He just smiled a lot and kind of like seemed like he, was, he had retreated into his own world. Anyway, I was talking to him and a whole lot of his friends. And we then, the meetup ran. And at the end of the meetup, there were a few people left. And I said, look, guys, I'm starving. Then anybody, want, anybody who's left here, there were five people left, including this 24-year-old guy, who, by the way, I hadn't spoken to yet. And they said, well, who wants to come for dinner? And it was like three of us, four of us, I think it was. Mm. It was this 24-year-old, this shy, reserved, borderline Asperger's 24-year-old. It was, who had a, he had a, he, you could see he had a bit of genius in him. It was his mentor, which was a guy that was much older and, kind of like a father figure and we went for dinner and just spoke about i told them about my plans for banter and starting a school and teaching they told me about all these amazing things that they were doing and at the end of the dinner by the way this 24 year old hadn't said a word the whole of dinner he hadn't said a word 
people were telling me that he's a good Chartist, but he, had never, he hadn't said a word. And at the end of the dinner, after we had paid the check, he said, hey, just by the way, watch this chart and watch this chart. And then I went home, and it was a Friday, and it was the next morning was Saturday, and I went home. I opened up my coin gecko, I was like, 100%. 100% up in 24 hours. So I texted him. <laughs> I said, what the hell was that? He said, now watch this. Okay, cool. Give me a second one. Next morning, wake up. Look at the coin gecko. 100%. I was like, what the hell is going on here? He said, uh, read the charts. I said, okay, well, if you read the charts, well, why don't you come and do an interview on banter on Monday and Tuesday? He said, I've never been in front of a camera before. I don't even have a webcam. I don't, even have a comp I don't even know what mm, I didn't mm, even have my mm, own computer mm, or something. Mm, mm. <laughs> and I said, well, do an interview. And when I did the interview, the community got so excited about this 24-year-old carpenter who had just lost his dad, who was probably in the darkest place of his life. Um, and someone, someone said, this guy's so accurate. He's the sniper. And that was the beginning of Sheldon the sniper. Wow, bro. <laughs> and to be honest, for me... Um, that was a turning point and the reason why that was a turning point is because i realized that w by virtue of m having some ma made some money and by having built some fame and a, and a profile and by virtue of having had a lot of people listen to me i had a power and the power was that i could change people's lives and that was when changing people's lives. I mean, I always lived my life like that, but that was kind of like when it formalized because I kind of watched Sheldon's life go from where he was to mm, where, mm, where, mm, where, mm, where you mm. are today. And I realized that you have a power to change people's lives. Mm. You can change people's lives through educating, through giving them opportunities. And it doesn't really cost you anything. In fact, it just makes everybody stronger. Mm. And you can arguably say that banter is a much stronger station because First, at first it was just me changing lives and now it's you changing mm -hmm. lives and it's Kyle and it's Miles and w w I realized very quickly that we had one objective and the objective was to change lives the lives of everyone that we, we interact with mm. and through doing that to build the most profitable community in the world mm. and that's pretty much the mission and that mission won't change that mission is the mission is the vision and I, I don't know I think the beautiful part of it is also like guys just be yourself as you're learning, share it. Like, I think that's like, you know, speaking about the, the CNBC guys and like it's scripted and it's like very much like suit and tie in these things. But I love that realness. I think that was the big part, the, the, the big sort of gap that the world's always needed was that realness. And as you said it, as we learn it, we basically share it like, but when, when it was the radio station and like these sort of things, like was that idea of like, if I bring someone and then they start changing lives and they start changing lives. And they, did you actually realize like how quick the chain effect yeah. actually I didn't know like, what a community was. I actually did it for, for maybe what you could argue was the wrong reason. Okay. The reason why I did it was I needed discipline to stay up to date with the crypto market. Okay. And the best discipline that you can have for staying up to date with the crypto market is having to report or to make a show every single day because to make a show every day, you gotta know everything that's happening in the crypto market. You gotta know it in depth. Mm. And then you gotta take the best stories that you think are gonna move the markets. And then you gotta put them into a format where you know so much about them that you can talk about them and teach other people about them. That is like discipline, 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 discipline. But if you do that, in a world of information asymmetry, in a young industry, if you have something that forces you to remain hungry all the time, and up to date, you're guaranteed to make money because mm. you're mm. always looking mm. for information. You're always looking to how you interpret the information. So you're guaranteed to make money. It's, it's, it's not even yes or no. If you have half a brain cell in your head, you'll make money. And that's why I did it because I needed to be disciplined to stay up to date with the markets. Mm. And then, and then the rest is kind of history. The mm. rest will just took off and people loved it and they loved the crypto reality show. And that's what it was. The next thing, like, What's been the hardest part about this though? Was there like anything that was really like, cause when ideas come to life, it's great, but this thing grew fast, bro. Like this thing went really fast. What's been the most difficult thing that you've had to sort of face with it's, building banter? So first of all, I want to say that it's been really easy. Okay. So why has it been really easy? Because I love what I do. 
I, there's nothing. If you say to me, look, there's no money in it, and I would still do exactly the same thing. Because mm. I love crypto so much. And I love educating so much. And I mm. love changing people's lives so much. And mm. it's like you get this return automatically where you just see a community who makes money, whose lives change, who become more educated every single day. So unlike my previous business where like it got hard and there were lots of people and systems. This is fun. Like mm. we have fun here. There's, there's table tennis tables and it's mm. fun. And all mm. we do is we come here and we talk about crypto all day. We start off our day with a morning call where we sit and talk about crypto for an hour. Like how cool is that? Mm. Mm. And so generally it's been like a pretty easy, fun ride. I guess the hardest part of it has been um, dealing with attacks on credibility. Mm. And I mean, I, to, that, to that end, we know that we do everything with the best intention. Mm. We do everything because we want the community to benefit we do everything from the heart and often specifically when the market goes down because we're so big and so famous mm, and so influential mm. it's very easy for people to attack our credibility and i take that very personally because you know when they attack the credibility they they in fact attacking your integrity mm. so i guess the times where i've wanted to to quit and i haven't really wanted to quit but the closest i've come to quitting is or the close the most anger that i've had or the most a sadness that I've had is when our credibility gets attacked. Mm. And, you know, sometimes our credibility gets attacked because we've made a mistake and we do make mistakes. Um, and we did make a lot more mistakes when, when the business had just started. We had no idea where the hell we were. Mm. I mean, we didn't then we put the code of conduct in place and then we put the auditors in place and, you know, we're putting more and more and more the 24 hour no trade rule in place and whatever else. Um, but, you know, people still found the holes way back then and attacked us about things that happened in the first four months about the business's life. That's one thing. Mm. Second thing is, like, as far as I know, we're the only channel that didn't accept any kind of payment for exposure on the channel. Like, I, I remember all the YouTubers were getting free tokens, and we were always the ones that said, "Look, no, you've always been like, don't super touch it. You all have to sign a code of conduct. The auditors are going to audit you at the end of the year." Like, and. You know, accusations that, that we had been paid or that our integrity wasn't our integrity when actually we do everything, I think, with the most integrity in the market. I mean, to the extent that people always say, oh, you shill projects that you invest in. Mm, not really. We always told you that banter is a reality show. No, if, let's go back to what banter is. Like, banter you're is just a reality saying show. what you are doing. Like, yeah. it's, it's, if uh, I invest in something, I'm going to tell you I invest in mm, something. I'm not mm. reading off a script. If I invest in something, I'll tell you I invest in something. I'm pretty honest about it. I tell you what round I bought and I told you what price I paid mm. and I probably tell you not to buy it when the, proje the, the project launches or I tell you to buy it because I think it's going to go up. But that's what the reality show is about. Mm. And I, I think we were the only channel that when we invested in a project, we made them sign a doc or, or later on, we made them actually, we told them all the time that if we invest in your project, it does not mean that it's going to be mentioned on the station. It's a different entity that invests. Um, it's not related to the, to the station. But if, if we are invested in your project, we may talk about your, your project because we are invested and because mm. we want to usually talk mm. about our investments. But, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you're shitting the project that you're invested in. Well, what do you want me to talk about? Mm. It's a reality show. I'm not reading off a script. No one's giving me a script every day. I just tell you what I'm doing. And I tell you why I think I'm doing it. And then you make your own decisions. So I think that the hardest part for me was, the, hardest, the only hard part for me is attacks on our credibility because... I don't need to do this. I do this because I want to change people's lives. Um, we don't make money from YouTube. You know that. Yeah, we make some yeah, money from sponsorship yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. But I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing it because I want to change people's lives. And when you do something with such a big intention and then you get attacked by faceless avatars, it's just, it's, it's demoralizing. But the truth is... No, it is. It's, uh, we, 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 we're trying to be something different right now. Like... Dude, you, you're the first one in the office in the morning, you're the last one to leave every single day. Like, you're working your ass off every single day to be there for people and to, to bring the best news every day. Like, it's, uh, people don't see that though. And I, I think that's, been, that's I been my hardest part with this business was the fluctuation. Was that doesn't matter if we're on top of our game. If this market's going down, like, you just get this, like, this, this, this heat. And then when it's up, you're this, like, absolute hero and it, like, just shoots. I think that's been my hardest part. Was it? And anything similar with CNBC? 
it's hard eh? it's, it's, it's very it's very tough it's yeah. actually it's a it's a little bit of a mind like because you feel on top of the world you're proud of yourself and then all of a sudden literally in one week <laughs> well i think about 40 percent of the people turn on you and they're like they're not happy like i get it we're all upset and we're like we go through these losses and stuff but um for us every day you know to have that 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 that, that extra push like i actually want to give us a high five for keep for, for keeping on like we don't stop bro i find <laughs> it i find it super hard that you know people think they can hide behind chats and avatars because that way they don't have to face the consequence of what they're saying to another human but ultimately we're humans we tell people what we do which is exactly what we, we do um when things are good they tell us that we're gods when things are bad without remembering that things have gone bad for us they 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 tell us how how bad we are and whatever else ultimately we're on the journey together mm. and i think for me the, the the climax of that was the lunar incident so let's actually bring that up now because if you don't want to know what realness is right now and you don't know about <laughs> what we're talking every day when we say we are doing something and we're talking every single day this is the perfect story bro like this was probably the biggest hit of your life right like finding like ridiculous and it's actually actually saw it staring at us there i know it's too soon i'm sorry bro and i think uh, we will actually we'll actually bur burn that pillow um but bro i think this is an important message to share yeah like guys ran had a massive 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 bag in luna and he's always spoken highly he's done his top research on it every single day um and he hit a big knock on it, it's a very big turn so overnight was, with it, it was, um but if you ever want you know we'll jump into it now and i'd love for you to actually say it but if you ever want a leader or someone that you're watching every day to be as true as possible like the man was 100 percent in and he literally got shot like he literally lost what would you say so i'll walk you Six, through it yeah yeah actually go I'll, through I'll it i'll walk you through it i met luna in 2017 2018 in korea i was the first western journalist to go to Korea and cover the Korean blockchain scene. Met these two very smart guys who were building a stable coin, Do Kwan and Danny, and decided to invest in their stable coin. For two years, nothing happened. And then in 2020 or whatever it was, the Luna started to explode. And I'd seen this before. So I told people to start buying Luna at 35 cents. And I think we all know what happened with Luna. Mm -hmm. Luna exploded. I carried on buying and carried on buying and I built a massive bag of Luna. In fact, at one point, Luna was over. In fact, when Luna collapsed, Luna was bigger than 50% of my portfolio. Oh, wow. And it was a lot of money. It was more money than I've ever. It was over $100 million, and it was more money than wow. anybody wow. that I've ever. I don't know anybody that's lost that much money in two days personally. I've, I mean, I've obviously read books about people like that, but I've never, in, for the life of, I never ever thought that would happen to me. Never. Mm. It was just me? No way. Come on. Mm. I even remember my mother asked me once. she said, are you sure you know what you're doing? And I was like, mom, don't worry. I know exactly what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. then I, like, I was thinking to myself, like, but I tell people to diversify all the time. And I even said on the show, I made a chart of Luna, like Pac-Man becoming from a small part of the pie chart. You, to becoming even saying I'm selling Luna. Yes. I think that was even the, the, and, the, the and, and I had all the intention of selling Luna. And unfortunately I started selling, but not enough. And the lunar ecosystem collapsed and i'll never forget that day that period for as long as that it was the hardest the hardest period of my life and i've had some mm -hmm. hard periods i haven't lost a loved one like you have so i can imagine that i haven't got to that level so here's how the here's how the how the events played out over the weekend a lot of my i had luna was my biggest position the lunar ecosystem was my biggest i had a lot of investments in the ecosystem the dexes the the the, the metaverses the you know all those things yeah me too bro I had so many i had my dry powder my my money that my cash on anchor risk-free earning 20 percent <laughs> yeah and on the weekend one of our and this is after luna had raised the three billion dollars with a bitcoin to hold the peg one of the traders phoned me said look it's deep pegged it's at 98 or 99 or something it's like this you know what, they're going to deploy the three billion dollars everything will be fine leave me alone good weekend i was with the family we were, we were away on monday he's like it's deep pegged again should i sell all the ust we had a lot of dollars in ust i was like ah, it's, come on they're going to deploy the three billion anytime they'll be fine. They'll be fine. the three billion's coming anytime now come on I think we all know what happened in the next 48 hours. Um, Luna depegged. 
and the next day Luna had kind of I think Luna went I don't remember the numbers but say Luna went from 90 to 60 or whatever the numbers yeah I think it went to 45 or somewhere in that somewhere in that area somewhere there. I don't yeah. remember the numbers yeah. and the team came to me and said should we sell the UST we can get like 80 cents in the dollar and should we sell Luna I said just hold them both because I had, I had we'll, we'll start on the next retest we'll start on the next retest <laughs> yeah. and I'll never forget this for as long as I live ever you know, my eyes aren't great, so, so I had to wear reading glasses in the mornings. Um, so I woke up in the morning, and I was going to the toilet, as you do in the morning, and while walking to the toilet, I always scroll to see the Bitcoin price. Mm. And because Luna was my biggest bag, out of habit, I, what I would do is look at like token number five, and that was always Luna. And I woke up in the morning, and I looked at the screen, and I couldn't really see the screen, I was like kind of holding it, I was like, and there was no Luna. And you're just scrolling, and there's no Luna. And there's no Luna. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, that's oh, like heart sunken moment. Oh like. my God. Deep right. breath. And then I had to come, and I mean, they had to do a show that day. And this is now seven o'clock in the morning, take the kids to school, do a show. But you know now that you lost 50% of your portfolio, you lost $100 million. Not only if you. That thing literally fell to like cent, not even like, I, I can't believe how it. You, 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 I, I, was, I was out of words. I was driving to the office thinking I've lost 50% of my portfolio. The other 50% has been hit so hard because remember Luna crashed, Bitcoin crashed, Ethereum. I remember walking in here and like, like, people looked at me like I was the dead because mm -hmm. they knew that that's, that was a position. You actually looked fine on the day and we were like, he's ran okay. Like I, I think that penny was, didn't drop just yet. Like broken. it was like, it was dropping. I think it was so much to, 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 it was broken. to swallow. You, and you know the thing with Luna, it. you know the thing with Luna is that, like, let's say Ethereum crashes. Like, you know, you can hold it and that may recover or like, you know, whatever, like Bitcoin crashes. It's okay. Just don't sell. You know, they always say, if you don't sell, you don't take the loss. Mm. But with Luna, it was different. It was black or white. It was either this deep, decentralized stable coin, algorithmic stable coin was going to work or it wasn't. Mm. And not proved that it wasn't going to work. And that was the hardest day of my life. And then as if that wasn't hard, like losing 50% of my wealth and, and you know, the thing with losing your wealth, it's super interesting. And it's, it's something that I've now learned. I've tried to rationalize, like to get over my thoughts about this, but I lost my freedom when I lost that money. And let me explain to you what that mm -hmm. means. It's a very interesting concept. So when you make money and you know, you have money, it gives you a sense of freedom. I'll give you like a basic example. If you know that you have a billion dollars mm -hmm. and you've missed your flight, you know you can charter a jet. Yeah. It gives you freedom. Yeah. Money yeah. gives you freedom. If you know that you don't have money, you can't go on vacation. But if you have a hundred billion dollars or a billion dollars, you can go on vacation whenever you want. Mm -hmm. it gives you freedom. So having money actually is a means to having freedom. And what happened to me was because I had so much money, so much money, I felt I had a feeling that I could do whatever I wanted and it made me feel very, very, very free. And when you lose that money, you lose your freedom. So it's almost like going to prison in a way. If you, like, it's, you. Just, it's just degrees of how your freedom is taken from you. So when you have resource, you have as much freedom as you want. But as your resource declines, you have less and less and less freedoms. You have the freedom to work. You don't have the freedom to work when you want to because you now have to work you you get access mm, so you lose mm. freedoms and the thing that hurt me the second most not the most because we'll talk about what hurt me the most what hurt me losing the money was exceptionally hard mm. losing the freedom and the dreams that i had with that money buying a new house maybe one day doing a, a yacht holiday with my friends which is always a lot that killed me but that wasn't the worst part that wasn't the worst part when luna collapsed two things happened. The first thing that happened was people started to blame the people that shilled the Luna ecosystem to them. Mm -hmm. Crypto man ran, you're a scam. You got me into Luna. Crypto man ran, you shilled this project chain when you, p literally people called me a cunt and a mm. pussy and I was getting DMs and death threats. I saw bro, it was, death a, threats it was a crazy, and, crazy and few yeah, weeks. Yeah, I mean, even like high profile names were like, how irresponsible of you. 
These people hadn't said one word on the way from 35 cents to $100. Mm. Not a word, not a, not a peep. And then when it went from $100 to zero, these people were like, B- bad words, suicide threats, oh, sorry, death threats, suicide notes. Who got you into the ecosystem? Crypto man run, what a scammer. Mm. Like, just imagine this all happening to you. All right, once. Like, I can't while you've even... just lost the most money that you've ever lost. And I mean, it was like, it was the blackest day of my life. I remember that I was walking around with, I was so tired, but I couldn't sleep and I had no energy. I couldn't eat. I had the, the, the blood on my face was like numb and tingly. Like, and I went into like this, this black hole. Mm-hmm. And then the problem is that the more I was looking at Twitter, the more negative Twitter became. And, you know, Twitter shows you stuff about you. So Plus Bitcoin was down. Like Bitcoin was down. Like, Crypto man run is a scammer. It just wasn't stopping. Bro. Sheldon is a scammer. Crypto mm-hmm. man run is a scammer. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin is down. Um, um, it was ugly. Mm. It was really, 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 really ugly. And then, um, so I had to stop looking at Twitter. So I switched off my phone and I threw myself a pity party. Okay, okay. which was like, just, I was on my own. And after a couple of days of like switching off the phone, I switched off the phone for a weekend. I kept making shows because I, cause I had a, res- a moral responsibility to the community to show them how I'm dealing with it. Mm. And then the one day I decided, the one day something amazing happened. And what happened was I realized that I'm down, but I'm not out. And I said this before, but I'll say it again. I saw me as a chart. And you know, charts have higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and mm-hmm. higher lows. Mm-hmm. I realized that even after this knock, I'm still way higher than I was in the beginning of the bull market. And what I realized then was that this is just a higher low. Mm. And if this is a higher low, then the next higher high is going to be absolutely mm. amazing. And so mm. what I started to do was I started to automatically focus on the business because I realized that the best opportunity that I've got to make back that money is to actually build banter. Mm. And whereas at the time I had t- two things going, two things. One was the investment side of it. Another side was the business side of it. And now that the investment side was pretty dead because destroyed half my portfolio, I had to focus on the other side. Mm. And what happened then at Banter was Banter exploded. The staff became more, more motivated. The community became more motivated. We started to build a much better business. Mm. And so I said before, and I was interviewed with, by Scott Melker, and I said that you have to see the, 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 the silver lining here. And the silver lining is actually amazing here. The lunar crash was probably the hardest thing that's ever been, like you've ever had to go through in life, but probably one of the best. Like, would you say that it had to happen? You know, um, it's, uh, you know why? Because you had the, the sense of choice. You had the sense of freedom. And the problem with that sometimes is people focus on that. And maybe Banter just needed like that little bit more, you know what I mean? They needed that like love because look how you bounced back. And it wasn't like dude, people would usually take a year to bounce back from a loss like that. You literally bounced back in a week. And your inspiration was, and you came straight back in the morning with the meeting. You got everyone up. Let's build banter. Let's get back to I, what we started. I think I sent a message to the group. And I, I, I think, you know what, if you just give me a second, I'm actually going to go to the management group. Um, and I'm actually going to read out this message. Bro, you came pumped up. And we were like, what's just happened? Like I everything's just like melting down. Here comes Rand. Like, let's continue. Let's build it. And it was weird. Like that was the switch where even the staff, everyone just had this like this turn. It was so funny because people had resigned and because and, and I understand that they resigned because like, you know, the leaders lost everything. Mm. Um, the leaders lost everything. The, you know, there was no motivation in the office. We had all lost. I think everybody had lost big parts of their portfolio. Um, I have to find this message. That was like personally for me, I also lost. Wow, like a lot. It's I'm going to read 20, this message. 30, 40% of my portfolio. I mean, this is a, a message that was obviously posted on the, on the crypto banter group. Um, let me just have a look here. When did Luna collapse? What, what was May sometime? Yeah, I think it was May. End of May. It was end of May. Yeah. I remember that I, remember that I had an epiphany and I, and I wrote a message to the banter group. And I said something in the group. I said something like, this is the, the best opportunity that we have is to actually build this business. I'm going to try and find that, that mm. message and actually mm. read it. 
Uh, I'm gonna try and find that message and actually read it to you guys. I don't know, bro. Like for me, it just seems like it was a it was a road you had to go across. Like it just feels like in order for banter to to really be what you've always wanted it to be. I, I feel right. like I feel like it was a it was a hurdle that that had to come across the journey. Uh, I don't think anyone really wants to experience that hurdle. Um, but it's also a powerful story, bro. Like the fact that like you got through this hurdle and you continue to strive. Be, you're gonna be very shocked but banter continues to go like you'll be very as shocked said, as i said you're creating a beautiful story bro and you uh, must be very proud of it right like i'm proud of you bro for for not stopping like everyone's very proud of you for like i'm hungrier than ever sheldon i'm sheldon i'm hungrier than ever dude and that is it's, you know what i mean like think about it, like you know you spoke about it with me as well like the death and these sort of things that's the same thing a massive hurdle in my life but you're teaching a very valuable lesson bro like you know you, you got to look at it at some point and you got to look at what what's left and you got to like look at it or why it happened and basically bounce back and come back harder um and banter's boomed so I'm, i can't find the message but I'll, I'll i'll put up the message and you guys can actually read it but um i don't wish that anybody goes through what i went through mm. it was it was so hard it was and again it wasn't it wasn't losing the money losing the money was hard losing the freedom and the dreams was hard mm. but the most the biggest thing was losing your integrity maybe or people attacking your integrity and your credibility and you know you only have one one integrity one credibility and one profile in life that's it you can't change it you can't buy it you can't did you feel at some point this was it like when, when the yeah, lunar clash plus the guys were, were, were attacking points. and these were you like like i'm done or like you know yeah. is this yeah really yeah yeah and then something happened to me but when it happened to me it happened to me i can't explain it to you because it's not a logical thing it's not like i thought about it but something inside happened to me where i got this like i don't know if it's hormonal i don't know what it was, what it was but it was like <laughs> i woke up in the morning and that was when i wrote that message and i said there's only one way to fix this and that's actually to come back stronger and at the time i thought how can i come back stronger? i don't have a portfolio with so much money to be able to invest the market's dead mm. everything you've just, just worked for for the last three years just but I thought, disappeared i thought you know what and i must have i've been in since i sold my first business i've kind of been working in in free in free flight you know like whatever right? come to work have fun do a show don't do a show have fun i've got a great work ethic but now it's like i went into again i said i'm gonna do it again hmm. and this time i'm gonna do it bigger and this time i'm gonna do it with a mission and a purpose and since then so since then banter's 10x now which business do you know that's 10x i mean banter's got people want to invest in valuations of a billion dollars plus hmm. um uh where do you know a business that is 10x in in the bear market in a couple of months and that is because we focused on 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 fixing this business because that higher low bro that higher low <laughs> and to be honest as i said before in, on on multiple other interviews i said if you would have asked me remove the journey remove the emotions would you rather have a massive lunar bag or would you rather have a, a strong banter and go for banter anytime and i'll tell you the the, the simple reason why Luna is money, and money can buy me, could have bought me freedom and, and luxuries in life. Mm. But banter changes lives. Mm. And when you can do what you love, and at the same time change people's lives every single day, and you wake up in the morning and you can go to bed every night and go, change his life, change his life, change his life, change his life. Change your life, mm. change Fred's life. Mm. James, Jimmy, Carl. Mm. I'm watching Carl now. Carl, Carl's actually and they're changing lives, and it's creating this whole beautiful. Let, let's change. talk about uh, Sheldon's mm. story. Everyone knows carpenter lost his dad. Today d didn't have any money. Today worldwide celebrity, making r reasonable good money, mm. Um, mm. and has the ability to change lives. Right. Mm. Let's t let me tell you the story about Carl. So I don't look at my. I get a lot of spam WhatsApp messages because I'm. I'm so dorky that on the on on the show I always leak my WhatsApp number by mistake and I show us, I always do those stupid things. So everyone knows my WhatsApp number. So generally I get a lot of WhatsApp messages from numbers that I don't recognize, but I never ever read them ever ever ever. And I don't know why, but one day I was driving home and it was a number and I clicked on it, and it was a guy who gave me a long sob story about how he lost his job during COVID. He's a white male in South Africa and a white male in South Africa, you can't get work because yeah, there's a black, tough, black empowerment. Mm. Um, 
And I don't know why, look, I probably get a thousand messages and I don't know why I replied that message. And I said, you know what, come work at Banta tomorrow and the next day. And if you find a place and we'll put you there. That person was Kyle. Kyle was the producer with Fred. We gave him a job. And now he's got his own show because mm -hmm. he proved that he could do a show. And now he's, he's changing his whole life. His whole life has changed. Mm -hmm. In a life, few months. In a few months. Your life changed. Kyle's life changed. James' life has changed. Fred's life has changed. Everybody around us, you, you change lives. And for me, that's the best thing. Like I look around and I say, okay, well, what have I achieved here? I literally change people's lives every day. And that's what I want to do. I try and do it in my personal capacity as much as possible. So like when we go to restaurants, I, I tip 100%. Like if the, if the check is $100, I tip $100. When we go to a, ga a, a gas station, I tip the guy, mm -hmm. like, you know, I always round it up and much more. Because I know that that's a small thing for me, but it's a big thing for the person mm -hmm. on the other side. So generally on those small things I like, I enjoy changing people's lives because I have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. Then there's the next level, which is being at Banta and being able to change everybody's lives at Banta. And you know, Banta is not a place where you come in here and there's a job description. Every single person that works at Banta, look around you, every single person that works at Banta, they come here first and we find a role for them afterwards. Mm. So it's like people reach out and say, hey, we really want to work at Banta. Okay, come work. Mm. Well, what's my job? I don't know, just come work. And what I love about it is all of them were fans first. They're all fans. They come here and they work. <laughs> cool. They come here and they work. And then we find a skill set there's another guy now who runs our discord hmm. you know he reached Josh, out to yeah. me he says i'm looking for a job and i said well i don't really have a job but come and sit here and if you can find something to do do it and he's like well let me build you guys a discord I'm like cool build a discord he's got a job here so the the ability to change people's lives that work in your very small circle around you is unbelievable it's more rewarding than any money that i ever made in the marketing company mm. and any money mm. that i ever made mm. in my crypto portfolio but the ability to create other people who then change people's lives. No, and so you watch uh, a network of lives being changed every single day is a feeling that that's why I can't sleep at night. That's why I come here. I'm the first guy in the morning. That's why I'm looking through. I enjoy the adrenaline moment, of crypto, bro. but when I can change people's lives every single day. And they do it and it creates this chain and it's. How many lives <clears throat> have you changed? Yeah, I'd like to say a lot, a lot, a lot. So I changed your, I changed one but person's life, and you, that person changed yeah. hundreds of thousands of people's lives, right? Yeah. And Carl is the same, you know. And uh, we we found Miles, and Miles was. Dude, but you, you know what's the most beautiful part about it though? Is all I had to do was change my life in front of people, and automatically they would start. Like, I just had to focus, <laughs> and that's the beautiful part of it. It's like, like you said it as well, like. You did this to, to focus on yourself as well, to, to make sure that you are looking after your portfolio. Mm. You are keeping ahead of these things. Like, and, and I think it's a big message for people out there as well. Like, look how by you just looking after yourself and doing it, but not being afraid to share it and being open with it. Like, look how it automatically just creates this, like, like this chain, bro. And it just forms this whole badass army because it may be bear market now, but the banter army is the strongest army you will see. Even like, in they the are like... Even, Even in the, in bear, the bear like market, they are extremely like meetups all over the world, parties all over the world. Wherever I go in the world, we get picked up by Lambos, bear market, bull market. It's amazing. Um, you touched on a good point, which was banter being a crypto reality show. And you know, very often in the morning calls, people say, why don't you do a show about this? Or why don't you do a show about that? People want to hear about that. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it because I don't actually care about it, even though it's big news, because it's not part of what I'm doing. Mm. And I think the same for you. We're human. We tell you what we've learned and what we're doing about it. You should do your own research and then you should decide if you want to join the journey mm. or not. Guys, I started my shows with trend lines and I've never stopped showing trend lines. Yeah. Like, I'm nothing but me. It has always worked for me and I didn't have to prove yeah. anything to no one. Like, and it's just. For you, I mean, it's been very interesting working with you, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's been very interesting working with you. So you have a very. You. You have a lot of talent. Mm. You have a lot of talent. Thank you. Bro. You have you see things that other people don't see. And I, to be honest, I always knew you were a good chartist, but I always had a, a suspicion that you were a good chartist because we were in a bull market and you were bullish in a bull market. And then, to be honest, you don't really need to be a good chartist. And I always had that suspicion in the back of my head. Mm. I really, I thought like, mm. when the bear market comes, this guy's going to get wrecked. But you know, I'd been through a couple of bear markets. I knew how what it was. You hadn't been through a bear market. Mm. 
Then there was one day where, where I clicked that it actually wasn't that. And that was the day that we played pool. And I'm a good pool player. I can play <laughs> pool very well. And you kicked my ass. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And I remember, <laughs> and I remember at one point realizing why, why you kicked my ass. And the reason why I kicked my ass was because pool is all about angles. It's about trend lines. It's about the line here and the line here. And it's the angle of how you hit the ball and where the ball bounces. Mm. And then I actually realized that when you look at charts, it's like a chess prodigy looks at the chessboard. You're in it. You already see it. Like you see it. So then, so, so, so then I realized that you got this talent. And from, I think from that point on, I kind of realized that it's actually raw talent. Um, not luck. It's actually just raw mm. talent. The second quality that you have is that you're unbelievably competitive. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I know that because we socialize and we play, we play paddle, yes, which is a kind yes, of tennis yes, together. Yes. And I mean, the level of competition on those mm. paddle courts is, 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 yeah, we mean, should record one of those. We should record like one of those. Those, those are yeah. really good. And that created, and the, the competitiveness between us, because I'm also highly competitive, yes. creates an amazing <laughs> dynamic here in the office. Everything's a bet here. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's a bet. Yeah, what time I'm will true. Sheldon jump on the morning call? That's a bet. What time will <laughs> Sheldon do a show today? That's a bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everything's, everything here is, is, a, is a thing. And then the, uh, the last thing that I realized about you, though, is um, that you're young and that you don't have a father figure and that you're unguarded. Hmm. And the problem with, with talent is that if talent is not guarded, it can be wasted very quickly. Hmm. And so sometimes I kind of, I know that I kind of act as a father figure for you. Where I like, I watch you, I know you're making a mistake. I try and tell you, but ultimately you go out and make the mistake anyway. And then you come back and like, yeah, I made a mistake. It's like, okay, cool. Sheldon, no worry. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. Hmm. So it's been hmm. super exciting. Hmm. It's been super exciting working with you. And it's been, it's been ultimately one of my biggest rewards actually working with you like just oh, watching a lot bro. yeah watching someone go from zero to i don't know five hundred thousand twitter followers f hundreds of thousands of viewers millions of dollars in the bank mm, mm. um no thank you watching bro. someone uh, and i hope you don't mind me saying this on a podcast but i remember as recently as i want to say eight months ago mm. you had the noose of debt and your mom's debt around your neck. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you talk about freedom. Did I had you, everyone that side? I was alone there in the city. Yeah. I remember that you were so, you were so um, drawn down and not free by debt. Mm. And then, like, you look eight months later, and it's like, dude, my mom's moving to Cape Town. Yeah, like, it's that's, your mom's uh, that's, moving. That's, that's, your mom's moving. You've got a, you've got an expensive hobby now, which is, I mean, that's a freedom. You know, being able to mm. race carts is a freedom. Mm. And like to watch someone go from there to there and you say to yourself, you know, like, like obviously it was your talent that did it and it was your hard work that did it. But it was like, I felt that I, I lit the spark. No, you did, bro. I lit the fire no, no, you, and then you, and exploded. And, we, that's and, and you've always been there. Like you teach me hard lessons too. And yeah. that's what I love about it as well. Like, um, no, you've really just, you gave me the stage. You allowed me to, to make the mistakes. Um, but uh, you support me and you always I remind you, I remind you of a, of a day, which, it, which for me is a very cool day. It was a day where we went to Miami. You'd never traveled to Miami before. You'd yes, never be, for, yes, so for you, yes. like, it was so cool. It's like watching, walking around with someone who'd never been, dream, to, like, never been to Miami before, like never been to a big city before. Your eyes were like wide open. And we went to the crypto conference and a lot of people were taking photos with us and we couldn't even get a minute break. And then I was supposed to do a talk on the stage. Do you remember? Yes. I was supposed to do a talk and I yes. said, and I remember you said to me, I want to do a talk, but I'm so scared of public speaking. And I said, okay. And I just kept that in the back of my mind. And then I got on the stage and I pretended I was going to do my presentation. And I was like, well, instead of doing a presentation, I'm actually going to call Sheldon onto the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sheldon I remember went that, bro. And so I taught you a lesson. I, I, I made you have to crush your fear of public speaking mm. because there you were on the stage and you had to talk <laughs> and we got a standing ovation bro it was actually like no no that, that it was, was amazing I, I, yeah i've never been so scared in my life actually um but that's the beauty of it bro like is that not what what this whole everything we're doing is about um well while we're closing up on on, on banter here because i want to get into a little bit of, of run and who you actually are like is banter a success in your eyes right now and what what is the level where you see it like that it succeeded like does run walk away or is he, he does he have a goal of ever walking or is it just like i'm gonna allow this thing to run as long as it goes the or first, is they like the first time that you get married you get married because everyone tells you you need to get married and the second time you get married you get married for love 
And the first time you run a business, it's because you focused on an objective, and the objective is to make a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars or, or 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 whatever. And the second time, once you've got that and you've made the money and you've sold the business and you've proved to yourself that you know how to build a business, the second time you build the business is because you just love absolutely it's what you do. It's purpose. It's love. It's. I love what I do. I'm going to continue to do what I do for as long as I love it. I don't really have an end goal in mind. I don't have a number in mind. I couldn't give a shit about the numbers. I mean, obviously, I like to pay the lights and I like to make money because it gives mm. me freedoms. But I'm doing this because I really, truly enjoy the journey right. every single day. And if I ever get to a point where for long period, obviously, they have some good days and some bad days. But if I ever get to a, per a period where for long periods of time, I don't enjoy what I'm doing, I actually might stop. Now, right now, it's not going to happen mm. because I've managed to mix the ultimate industry. Why is it the ultimate industry? Because you're dealing with smart people every day because only smart people can build blockchains. Mm. Okay? Like intellectually, it's an amazing industry. So it, you, it, 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 it ticks the intellectual stimulant part of my brain. It ticks the adventure seeker adrenaline part of my brain because there's a scoreboard, the number goes up, the number goes up, green, green means mm, amazing mm, adrenaline. Mm, mm, mm. So it ticks that, that part of it very, very well. My mind works 24-7, 365, and the crypto market's open 24-7, 365. So it ticks that box for me. Mm. And lastly, which is the most important box, is that we're doing this with a purpose. Mm. And you tick, you say, I'm working in the best industry, which, which, which intellectually completely gets me crazy with a scoreboard that tick my, tickles my adrenaline every single time and, and whatever else. And at the same time, the ability to change lives on a mass scale mm, mm, mm. like uh, i mean is no, it's a one bro it's uh there's there's nothing it's, it's actually unfair no it is <laughs> it's it actually is. unfair it is. It like is. it's, it it's is. like you know I, I talk to some of my friends who are still in traditional businesses like in trucking and in i don't know property management and, and everything else like and they tell me about like oh man like i signed a new contract i'm buying five new trucks and you know the five new trucks will deliver to five more supermarkets i'm like okay yeah that's yeah <laughs> sorry uh, so, sorry sorry uh, bro, i lost so, you <laughs> sorry i can't get excited you know so so or you know yeah like a friend of mine will tell me like i don't know i bought a new property today I'm like yeah and i'm gonna get, make a seven percent yield y yeah and sorry bro i just can't get excited like just, and i know you're excited i can't get excited mm, mm, because mm. i mean a that's intellectually for me intellectually dead two does it how many people's lives are you changing every single day mm. like where is the exponential part of it and what do you do once you put the tenant in? Mm. Uh, it sounds absolutely boring to me. So, I don't know. We should just count our blessings because mm. we're in an industry that we love. And we have, an, we have a platform to make real change to the world. And like I said, to build the most profitable community in the world and change as many people's lives as possible. And yeah, I mean, for that. Bro, I, I think we're in the top industry. I think we're at the perfect time of it. And I think it's... Uh, it's it's bringing people together. My favorite part about crypto, it's bringing people together. Like it, it, it's, it's incredible. My weaknesses of it though, is the addictive part of it and the balance. It's very important. Like, and, and I think young. what is your, no, no, but like for you as well, like there's a ton of people and I see them like, bro, they get addicted to charts. People get addicted to charts. They get addicted to leverage. They get addicted to these things. And they actually feel that the more they do, the more, the more, the more, the more. It's very similar to the Luna thing. I build it, 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 and all of a sudden that that pop just comes at, at, at any single point. Like, how do you balance your life as well? So, um, so I'm going to answer that in many ways. But the first thing that I want to say to you is, if you have been looking for a party, and then because you, you, you want to dance and you want to have fun, right? Mm. And then you arrive at the party, and when you arrive at the party, you arrive early at the party, and the music's playing. You must dance, bro. Yeah, yeah, dance, yeah. Because you know that the party's going to come to an end. I mean, maybe you arrived at nine. You know that at two, three, four in the morning, that party's coming to an end. Mm. So you know that you got between nine and nine and two to dance. That's exactly like crypto. This opportunity isn't going to be there forever. This volatility is not going to be there forever. This opportunity, this this ability to make abnormal returns no, and is not going to be there forever. You've arrived at the party now. If you arrived early, you arrived at seven. If you arrived later, you arrived at nine or at ten. But at two o'clock or three o'clock, it's curfew. And when the, when the curfew comes, the music stops. And they're going to start playing bad music, the music of institutions and, and yeah, zero returns. Left and, all and, over and all of that, yeah. <laughs> so you have about, you have about in my, my mind, you've got a year, maybe two years, to make of, of where the market is more skewed in your favor than it is in the big institution's favor. Mm. 
So now you've got to choose what you want to do in those 400 days or 500 days or 600 days. You can decide to try and be more balanced. And, I, and we'll talk about balance in a second. Mm. Or you can say to yourself, hold on a second. This is a period in life where I'm at the party and the music's playing. And I don't know how long the music's going to play for, but I can tell you that when this music's playing, I'm going to dance. Mm. It's like a surfer. You know, surfers can spend days and days and days waiting for the right waves. But on the day when the wave comes, you've got to make sure you ride as many waves as you possibly can because you don't know when the next time you're going to be able to catch a wave. That's exactly the thinking around crypto. So the first thing I want to say around work-life balance and actually everything life balance is look at the bigger picture, zoom out. And what you realize is you've got an opportunity here that you may never ever have ever ever Mm. again. Okay, You probably in our generation will never see an opportunity like this again. So if for me, the way I see it is, I've been alive for 40 plus years. If for one or two years, I'm going to work extra hard and maybe neglect some small things in my life so that for the rest of my life, I can relax, mm. I'm going to do it. The second thing is, I try and find balance. And when I say I try and find balance, I, re- I work really hard. You know that. I'm the first guy no, in you, here. You don't stop. I'm the, la- I'm the last guy on the, on the group. I watch every single show. I listen to eight hours of podcasts every single day. But I've managed to find Did some. you even watch your own shows? I watch my own show on the way and home. And that's something Every I've struggled with very much because I'm Every like, day. I'm so judgmental of myself and I like gun myself. Like, you have to. Ha- haters are great. Like they're cool, but I'm way worse than a hater. Like I destroy myself. You have to watch yourself. Otherwise, how are you going to get better? But, I could have said this better. I could have said this in a shorter period. Every but that must day. have like, was it always like that though? Where you always. could just like, always like not judge yourself. No, no that was hard. That was hard. That, that's the hard part. Like not judge yourself and not but like you hate your voice and not hate this thing. Like you can actually analyze yourself and you'll be like, I need to tweak there. Yes. I need to do that a little bit better. Like that's huge, bro. Yes. It's huge to get that. You have like, to. Every day, every day. Be your, be your own, your, your own judge. So, so that's the first thing. But you learn to balance it. So I'll give an example. Like I wake up in the morning uh, half an hour earlier than I should and I just read for half an hour. Um, then I switch off the phone, don't switch off, but I spend time with the kids and I dress them and whatever, you know, kind of get them ready for school kind of thing. And I take my kids to school every single day. So I already have spent like half an hour with, Good, with the fam and I drop them off. At, and like taking kids to school is actually like, it's fun and it's a ritual because mm. you talk about stuff and you do, like, it's fun. Um, actually, what I do now is my kid, my one kid is four. So I walk up into the class and I take, you know, two dollars, 20 rand with me and I walk up there and I say, anyone who can tell me what you can buy with $2 can have the $2. And like, they all tell me, I can buy a car. No, you can't. I try and teach them. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is me. I want to change people's lives. I want to teach. So, <laughs> so I drive the kids to school. As soon as I drop the kids at school, put the AirPods in my ear and I start playing podcasts. And then I'm at the gym or if I, maybe I go to the gym before I take the kids to school and I'm at the gym for an hour, but I'm listening to podcasts on two speed. So really, by the time I'm finished gym, I'm two hours of podcasts in. Okay, then I come to the office and I've got one hour where no one disturbs me and I basically catch up on news and I read and I listen and I read and I listen and I read and I listen. Then we've got the morning research call. Hmm. And then I work, 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 work till I finish my show. I work at the office for an hour after my show. I get in the car, takes me about 20 minutes to get home. I listen to my show on two speed. Yes, bro. Okay, then I get home. That's my sacred time with the kids. Until they go to bed, kids go to bed. Then I spend some time with the wife and whatever. And then I'm back on the podcast and I'm back reading and then I wake up again the next morning. On the weekends, from Saturday morning when I wake up until Sunday night when I go to bed, I spend the time with my kids. You can't, you cannot take me away from my kids on the weekend except for the game of tennis that we have every yeah, yeah, yeah. every Sunday every Sunday night. But otherwise, like you so see, you want balance. That's the balance. Like you got to find time for your wife. You got to find time mm-hmm. for your kids. You got to find time mm-hmm. for your business. And and the gymming is that also like a good every day just release for you as well like a good uh have to keep you keeps you sane keeps you sane that's why when you were going through a bad time i said to you sheldon start gym I said, stop smoking weed start like, smoking weed start gym mm. uh and, and sort out everything else but mm. that was kind of what i said to you i said to you first thing i do is stop the weed because the weed listen i love smoking weed i was numbing myself bro i think i got into a very long habit of it for yeah. a few years just I, numbing numbing all the pain and just like yeah i love smoking weed I mean, I love munchies. I love eating on weed. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's Watching fun. a movie is and stuff. It's great. Um, it's yeah, I love going. I love, for me, it's very hard to switch off and weed helps me switch off. But I don't, I don't smoke weed. And the reason why I don't smoke weed is because weed, it's, it's amazing. But it just makes me a little bit no, a little bit more no than yes. Mm. So you could present an idea to me the day after I've smoked weed. I would say no, but you can present the same idea to me without weed and I would say yes. 
Oh, now we know. So, so <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Um, and so, and so, it's I, I, I mean, as much as I love it, I think it's, and I think it does have good use cases, especially mm, on weekends. Mm, mm, um, mm. I try not to smoke weed, um, but when I do, when I do, I mean, I love it. Mm, Smoking mm. a joint, watching a movie, eating. No, I, I think for me, I just try to run away every night. Like the stuff was so much, so, so much was, dude, everything happened in like a year. I became a dad. I moved to Cape Town. The whole thing, thing like everything just, no, no, bro. Look and it was, now, bro. Your, first of all, um, your eyes are white. Yes. Your eyes used to be red. Look at your eyes. Your eyes are white. Yes. yes you got yes, your glow yes, back. Your yes, skin's glowing yes. again. You got your motivation back. You're up early no, in the I'm mornings. Good. I'm good now. Yeah, I'm, 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 I wake up my little girl every day. I'm truly, 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 truly grateful. Yeah, so it's, it's a different, so smoke, the, stop, stop the weed. Go. Stop numbing. Stop, stop whatever it is that you're numbing. If it's alcohol or these sort of things, like, cause you're really good. Like I even see you with the alcohol, like you don't like it. I don't so, know if you don't like it or so you, if just, I, you just, if you I just drink, don't. If I drink, then let's go drink and then let's get drunk and let's have a party. Because yes. I'm extreme. <laughs> but let's not get half drunk. That's not, that's not what I like. I, I mean, I, no, no, I get you. You want to go get I drunk? Get let's you. go get drunk, get get drunk and let's go have you. a party. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to say something. Um, so I remember when you sent me a, uh, was it a message? Or you, I don't remember. You sent me, you sent me an email. So, and you said to me, listen, I thought about this. Lot. You were in a bad place. Yes. yes you were under yes, pressure. Yes, it was yes. The market was down. You had just had your daughter. I um, think the whole having a daughter jarred you like you know, mm. put responsibility in it. And mm. you came to you. Mm. You wrote me an email and you said, uh, I'm quitting. Mm. And I remember I, I remember I said, I said, you know, you don't need to quit. Just take a break. Just yes. And, yes. You, and, and even after the break, if you want to quit after the break, that's cool. But just take a break because I could see. And I could see like I could see where it was coming from. I could see that it was that you you know like i think you would suppressed your dad for a long time mm. and i think the pressure of the market was fucking hard mm. you know like mm. and the negativity was hard and mm. losing all your money was hard and not all but you lost a lot mm. a, bi a big lot mm. of cash and yeah i think when my daughter came it was just uh, like, like that the responsibility yeah it was that switch that i just like i'm done numbing bro like i just want to be me like yeah and i, and I think we because let's let's not deny the fact bro like the negativity and the hate school and stuff but we got to put that like character on every day and we jump on because like we are feeling shit like you know how many times i remember like getting up half an hour before my show at home mm. like really like like this and then it's yo what's up guys smash that like button smash like you can literally go into this like whole whole mode every day bro for that you've that, that seen time. how many and it was like that how many youtubers had nervous breakdowns you've mm. seen that how, because mm. there's a responsibility there's a, there was one a week ago i don't remember who it was i don't want to name him just in case it's the wrong one and chico crypto has broken down many times and you know, there's a big responsibility on us. And I remember that you, you took this responsibility seriously. Mm. And the responsibility of having to make shows, the responsibility to banter, to the fans, um, to your family. Mm. And it was hard. And that's what I said to you. Just listen, bro, take a break. Mm. But if you're going to take a break, stop smoking weed, go to gym every day. And I remember you did. And I remember you started going uh, to gym. I started racing now. I started you threw everything, threw the weed bro. away. And look at you, a different person. You're motivating exactly, again. Bro. You're having fun. You're doing live shows. And I kind of like think to myself, like, wow, thank God you never quit. Like, thank mm, God it, it mm, was just a break, yeah, and thank yeah. God you never quit. And now look at your journey. Racing, your, another mm. YouTube channel, which is your life events. Mm, mm. Uh, yeah, we got a podcast, guys. You must definitely have a check. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, it's, it's been an incredible, incredible, incredible journey. Um, so I just want to go back just slightly to, to, to run, because, dude, you intrigue me so much. Like, I just, like, your brain and the way you have built it over the last few, like, I don't know if you're born with it or if it's a natural talent in that as well, but can you give me a little insight of just your life growing up? Like, I want to know what I'm asking is your household. Firstly, like, were your parents strict? Were they cool? Were they like, you like want to know what, 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 what was your life? And then I want to know was Rand the cool guy in school? Was he the nerd? Was he the ladies man? Was he the, like, I, I just want to know that Can't little believe. bit of before you you're asking me this. Be, be, before, asking me. <laughs> be, before it became this business, because dude, you're phenomenal. Like the, the, there's nothing like you're on top of your game at that. I just want to know before all of that. So I'll take you to the beginning. Um, grew up in a great family, touch wood. Uh, mm -hmm. n not, a, not a rich family, a poor family actually. So father, mother worked, had five kids. My parents were both employees, so it wasn't like we had, like, you know, not like my dad owned a business or my, you know, my dad just was a normal employee at a normal company. Um, so we grew up, we had a roof over our head. We always had decent schools, but we never had any luxuries. And so, and the problem is that we went to decent schools and in the decent schools, lots of people had lots of luxuries. So I was always like, ang not angry. What's the word? The word is 
envious and angry that, that I couldn't have what everybody else around mm. me could have. Now, look, I wasn't, again, I wasn't living on food stamps. I was, it was just, mm. but I always wanted more. At the same time, as you know, I have a brain that works much faster than anything. Like I listen to podcasts in two speed. And, yeah, and I, yeah. While, while, I'm re- <laughs> while I'm reading and, you know, like even before bed, I put a podcast on in two speed. I put my head on the cushion and that's how I go to sleep. Going like crazy, crazy, crazy. My head, my head works too fast. My head used to work so fast that I couldn't speak as fast as my brain was working. So I, I fumbled my words. <laughs> and I learned over time to control, to control my speech, my, to slow down my brain. Breathe, so that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, it, it puts people around you under pressure because you're thinking there and they're still here. Mm, mm, it's like, wow. so, so that's how I grew up. I, I've always been like that. I've always been very, very, very entrepreneurial. Um, I, because I was, my brain worked so fast, I was very bad at school because I used to have terrible ADD. I used to sleep in class and I failed okay. at school. I failed many, many like subjects and almost failed the whole of school until the last year where I kind of had a deal with the school that I would do things in my own time. I didn't have to come to class. Uh, and eventually, I, I mean, that was the, the final year of school, which here is known as matric, but it's like the last year and I did very, very well. After I studied, I did a Bachelor of Commerce degree, I did a, a CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst. Um, so that was pretty much where I came from. Uh, in terms of like, like school, was I the cool dude? No, I wasn't. I was like, I think I was always like the guy who wanted to be cool, but I, I, don't, I, I don't ever think I was the cool dude. Mm, um, mm, mm. School was a lot of pressure. I went to a school where, where a lot of people had a lot and we didn't have a lot. So it was like, it's, you know, like, mm, mm. Uh, you know it's, and it was a very materialistic school. Mm. So I think that's something where me and you are very similar. It was also like, I wasn't the cool one, but I was a part of the, the cool group, but I was like the last guy still like chosen of the, mm. the cool group. But also they had a lot more than me and these sort of things. But I think what we did was we built in the background. Like we had this like same, same thing in that time I as well. Because me as well, I sucked at school, bro. Like I sucked really bad. I had maths lit and I just passed maths lit even. Like it was really, really, really bad. But here we sit today and we love teaching. We love education. Like, so it wasn't actually the... The system didn't work for us. It, 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 it was a clear case that the system never worked for us. The system was made for the masses. The masses thought slower than us or different to us. And the system just didn't work for us. What do you think of the system? Like even now, it doesn't. It's, it's, like I mean, we get excited about crypto, but the sad thing is, a very small percentage is not even there yet. They're still studying to be doctors. You can learn everything be... that you want on YouTube. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I learned. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm educated. I've got a bachelor's degree. I've got a, a, a charter, so I'm educated. But, uh, and I guess that those that uh, that education taught me how to think. But that's about it. Eh? Like that's that's. It taught me how to think and, and maybe even taught me how to teach. That's it. I mean, mm. I think right now the, the system can't keep up with the technology in the world. And so, I mean, I, I guess everybody needs to go to some kind of school, but mm. you don't need, mm. you don't need yeah. MBAs. I think it forms anymore. like structure and like you know, get taking in information. Is there anything you would change if you could go back to that time across the journey? Anything just in specific, like did you have enough fun? Like, you know business what? is oh, serious yeah. bro like yeah. these things were like i'm just asking like because for me a big thing was like fun the last two years was so fun i'll tell like, you i'll tell you a story. i forgot how to have fun bro um i worked really 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 hard from the age of so i was in i built a tech startup in 2000 and it went to zero in 2001 when the tech bubble collapsed and um i lost everything i went from being 25 year old rich to being 25 year old living in mommy's house in in a in, oh, wow. in, in the same bedroom and then i sunk myself into building a business and i built slowly 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 i built the biggest marketing business in africa and at the same time i dated a lot of uh, sorry i i had long-term relationships for girlfriends which was okay okay so so <laughs> then then something happened sorry then something happened at the age of like 35 at I don't know how it all worked out, but I broke up with my girlfriend and kind of had lots of money because I was making money in the marketing company. Yeah. And then I had like a couple of years where I lived the dream. Bro. <laughs> when okay. I say when I say I lived the dream, just, I mean I can't believe I'm telling you this. These, yeah. are, these are like dirty secrets, man. <laughs> I mean, so though I remember just before my 35th birthday, there was a helicopter that flew over, and I was like, I've always wanted to fly a helicopter. And I was like my 35th birthdays came up why don't i just fly a helicopter and i phoned the air school and i said i want to learn to fly and they said cool here's the cost and here's what you need to do and the next morning i was at the air school and i had my first flight lesson a couple of months later i graduated from 
flying helicopters. I was a private pilot. And then, I don't know, you just think about young bachelor, full of confidence, because now I've got money and, you know, I still look okay. Um, not too old. Mm. Still no, you're look good, okay. you're good, you're good. And, I thought you were way younger than... than and, uh, and, uh, um, and you're single for the first time in a long time. And, you know, you're flying helicopters yeah. and <laughs> driving convertibles. And I and guess the, the boss. And I guess, and I guess that, uh, let, let's just say, let's just say, let's just say this, that I had, thank God that eventually I got married. Because if, if I'd carried on on that trajectory, I think I would have landed up like Dan Bilzerian or like, <laughs> like Andrew Tate or something. I, I don't know. I'm, yeah, just, glad, yeah. I'm, just, glad, I, I'm just glad that at some point I took the turn off and had the off ramp and landed up with my wife and got mm, married and, mm, and had kids mm, and, mm. and settled down because <laughs> they were they were a good five years where well that's good bro i'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you actually did actually have like fun and stuff that's, I mean, uh, that, that's what i'm trying to do now like i'm at that point where i'm trying to do that now yeah a first date but the, with the family the yeah. first date to the girl could have been anything from from flying overseas for the weekend to that's just crazy oh, I mean, wow I mean, bro that I big mean, eh? no, no, it was, it was a, look, <laughs> that's for a different podcast that's not for this podcast <laughs> yeah um, anyway no, listen bro. cool time to uh, yeah unless you got anything else no 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 no, no. we'll finish up i think last message to the fans bro anyone that is that is joining us anyone that is uh, a part of this journey we just want to welcome you guys we want to show you um that we are all we are doing every day is being ourselves learning as we um you know sharing as we learn um this was my first bear cycle like by the way like everyone like say sheldon in the bear cycle sure. guys i had to go through it like just watch how we are continuously evolving and building and ideally all that we're trying to create here is to just create a story in front of your eyes and if you can see that we can do it and you can see how it just happens in front of you naturally it inspires you and it just starts this like beautiful beautiful train uh, so balance your life. Um, Look, listen. Keep motivated. There's 65 of us, humans, bringing you crypto love and crypto wisdom every single day. Mm. And it's not scripted and it's not contrived. It is literally what we're doing every single day. You've seen my mistakes. You've seen his mistakes. You've seen our successes. For God's sake, I'm showing you my trading competition live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and... It is what it is. It's just, mm. and, and we're here and we're going to keep doing it for you guys with the best intentions, uh, bring you crypto life, crypto wisdom on a mission to change people's lives, everybody that we interact with and to make sure that we make the most profitable mm. community in the world. Mm. And that's mm. the objective. Join, join the family mm. and to everyone that has never stopped supporting us. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all on the next episode.